Welcome to the Nelson Atkins Remotely. I'm Julian Sugasaoite, the director, and I welcome all of you to visit with me for a, perhaps a special time, the Nefertari exhibition. It are difficult times in which we are living. Uh, the museum is closed, as you know, and we still want to give you access to the joy and of these treasures that we have among our community. So let me invite you to, ne to Nefertari, which is the queen that dominated Egypt in the new empire, along with Ramses II, her husband. And let's walk through this exhibition together. So here we have the map of Egypt, and the queen of Nefertari is in the Valley of the Queens, all around this central area, in front of Karnak and Luxor, which is the temples and where the priests would live. And a very quick, we have a very quick uh, chronology through the times to situate the new kingdom and the age of Nefertari here, after, of course, the pyramids or the Middle Empire, and, of course, after Nefertiti. Nefertiti was the wife of Akhenaten, here depicted, that is just earlier than Nefertari. Nefertari was a time of concentration of power, where Ramses II dominated, and it is one of the greatest uh, times of, for Egypt. Nefertari's tomb, of which we have here one replica, done in 1903, just immediately after the Italian mission led by Schiaparelli discovered uh, the tomb in the Valley of the Queens. This, to, this replica was done by his team with exact precision and it is so precise that when the Getty Conservation Institute was restoring the wall paintings, and this is perhaps, it's been called the 16th chapel of tombs because it's the most beautifully decorated, when the Getty was conserving it, they used this model to check the consolidation of it. So this is one of the most precise and beautiful analog things, and it goes back to the discovery that was made in 1903 by the Italian mission. Here, one of the greatest rooms where we have the most important and colossal sculptures that have ever traveled. And here you have a goddess Sekhmet. The goddess Sekhmet is a lion head female uh, goddess that represents power. And again, in this celebration of women, and in this celebration in particular of Nefertari as a ruler along his husband, the important thing is to notice how many deities are female deities. And this in particular is one that also represents the rising sun, as you can see in what she has in her head. Here, this is one of the most beautiful pink granite sculptures, and you see Ramses flanked by Amun and Mut, two divinities of his time. And again, here, the perfect balance and the beautiful carvings make this one of the most extraordinary sculptures. Ramses is at the center, and the processes are the two deities patron of Thebes, which at this time is the established power of the normal gods. And here behind we have again an ancestor to Moses I. And look at how finely carved a very strong stone uh, delves and shows every angle of the body. It's a beauty of the sculpture that also bears a lot of inscriptions and all of these hieroglyphs let us know who he is is one of our favorite sculptures. This is the representation of the goddess Mut, and she is here depicted with the royal uh, Uros, that is like a serpent and also her hat, that is a crown. 
and she is the royal spouse of the god Amun-Ra. Also again, very important celebration of Thebes, which is the city in front of the Valley of the Queens where the priests are. Now, on the other side, we have a replica of one of the temples of Abu Simbel, dedicated to Nefertari by Ramses II. And in the background, you see this exhibition brought incredible videos made by Ubisoft that really brings us to what civilization in ancient Egypt could have been like. After seeing the life of the, the palace or, or the Nile, here we have a vitrine with objects done in Der el Medina, which is the village of the people who worked on the tombs and also were creating all of the sculptures that allowed pharaohs and divinities to live in the afterlife. The people living in Der el Medina, and here we have a video also for what that life could have been like. And you see in this vitrine some very everyday objects, so not royal or not pharaonic made, but everyday objects that they would have had in their normal lives. Now, they had a particular privileged status because they could represent people in their afterlife, and by doing so, guarantee that they would live forever. So their priests of Thebes gave people in the Valley of the Queen and in the Thebes the possibility for these people of Daryl Medina to build their own uh, funerary rituals so that they themselves can live forever. And I think some of these objects are very precious because of that. Part of the funerary rituals were uh, in this epoch creating these little figures called shaktis that help the pharaoh or the person buried in the afterlife by rendering services. Some tombs have almost one for every day of the year and here you have the Shaptis for Seti I, who was Ramses II's father, in this very typical blue faience that uh, the Egyptians mastered early on. Part of the funerary rituals uh, consisted on creating mummies and embalming the mummy in, uh, after having conserved the body so that it would survive forever. And here you have four of the canopic jars in which different parts of the body would be also conserved. And each of these had a head of a divinity, as you can see, and they're really highly inscribed. So this is part also of the funeral rituals that will allow for life in eternity. Here we have, we try to reconstitute at least the proportions of where the original sarcophagus lid would have been in proportion to the pillars of the tomb that are reproduced. As you know, and as we said, all of the tomb was pillaged in, in antiquity. So even in ancient times, people were robbing the tombs because they had so many treasures. So very few fragments remain of the actual Nefertari tomb. And here, of the objects that were inside the tomb, here we have fragments of that uh, sarcophagus lid. And also, in the background, you see all the shaktis that were in, found in her tomb and that would help her live in the afterlife.
And here we have some other objects that were like leftovers. When the people stole every treasure that was in this tomb, they left over something. And this pillar, Jet, it's a pillar that would have been, and is inscribed with Nefertari's name in the back, has protection powers, and there would have been four in the four different corners of the tomb. And it is something that must have slept and fallen. But let me take you to where, and now we're starting to cover, in order to install and protect all the objects, we're starting to cover the vitrines. But let me show you this vitrine with some of the most beautiful objects. For me, this is the sandals that she wore. They were found in the tomb, and also fragments of her mummy that are the knees and the legs. So that tells you on the one side, the violence in which the robbers would steal everything from a tomb, and on the other side, the, the remainings of how also everyday life was represented with something as, as mundane or everyday use as some of her sandals. So you see from that picture how some tombs were reused in antiquities. That was a tomb discovered again by the Egyptian mission of Schiaparelli. And all the sarcophagus that were found on this tomb that were many recycled are here in this exhibition. And the sarcophagus was, of course, the the, the protecting shield of the body to maintain that life in the afterlife. And you can see that even the sarcophagus are painted inside so that the deceased can read the different uh, votives, uh, chants that they need to read to go into the afterlife. So while we are still close, I hope this virtual tour gives you a bit of a sense of what this beautiful exhibition and what this great civilization is all about. Go into our website. We have also our own Egyptian collection that you can research and continue enjoying the art that the Nelson has to offer. So this again, just to thank you for watching this and to let you know that as here the sun rises over the horizon in the Nile, um, I hope that very soon we're back operating and open. But in the meantime, look at our website, keep informed, be safe, and enjoy and take the time to both look at our works, marvelous works of art that give solace and, and a bit of perspective to the very difficult and trying times we're all living. But we're all here together and we want to be the Nelson Atkins, a resource for our community. Thank you for watching.